Bandtraining.com. I'm sure you're wondering what I'm doing down here on the floor. Well, let me explain. Recently got an email from a person who had a bad accident and essentially it rendered him unable to go ahead and weight bear because he couldn't put a lot of pressure on his foot due to a calf injury. So as a result, we had to create a workout for him that allowed him to stay non-weight bearing. Now his key was, hey, how can I keep my hips strong? How can I get a good cardiovascular workout? How can I keep my running form going? All of these were questions, and again, if any of you, just like me, if we would lose our ability to run or walk, we would be extremely concerned and panicky, maybe, uh, and how we can keep our training going. So to help this person out, I started thinking, what if I couldn't train with my feet? What would happen if I had to go ahead and train more in non-weight bearing, or as I say, kind of half weight bearing or partial weight bearing? What would I do? Let me show you what I came up with. One of the things that a lot of times if you can't fully weight bear, we can use the half kneeling position or we can use the, the double kneeling position. Now the key will be to make sure that you've got your knees padded. So obviously use a towel, use padding, do whatever you need to do to go ahead and do that. But once we get in that position, what's really cool is you shorten up the lever arm. So therefore, the butt really gets involved as a stabilizer as does the trunk. Now from this position, we can do a lot of exercises that you've seen me do before. Now I've got a setup back here. You're gonna notice my setup. I have some red bands and I have some black bands connected into them. Now Dave, why do you have the black bands connected into the red bands? Well, the red bands are gonna be my resistance. Essentially, they're gonna provide me most of my resistance. The black bands being a little bit wider, you're gonna see in a little bit why I went with those. But for right now, I set it up this way. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into doing a lot of the exercises you see me do. But what we're going to do is we're going to engage our hips while we're at it. Now you'll notice my feet are flat on the ground so there's no torque going through my calves at all. Where the torque is going through, it's through my hips and my quads. So the first exercise is just a simple chest press coming on out. Working that. Second exercise you can go to is go ahead and go into a simple bicep curl. Now if you want to use handles, go ahead. But I'm just going to go without handles and working it. Now again, you want to get your hips involved, come into a squat, and then come out of it. Come out of it. Come out of it. From there, easily can go into a tricep press. Now, the key is engage your hips and really squeeze your butt at the top. Now you can also go to just turning around and working simple pulling exercises and working those exercises as well. Now, I don't have max tension on my system because we're showing you the exercises. Obviously, I would stretch out a lot further if I wanted to go ahead and do that. What I thought was really cool was overhead press. Get into a four point pet position and work it. Now, this is an exercise that I'm telling you right now, a lot of my boot campers are going to like because they can get into that and work a different form of pushing overhead. And actually, I find it's a little more comfortable. So there's a series of exercises you can do without exposing that lower leg to any stress. Now let me come back with some cardiovascular training that I think you might be interested in doing. Hi, how you guys doing? All right, you back with me? Let me take you through a little bit of cardiovascular training and a little bit of running movement training that you can do while you're lowering your lower body to heal, but still working on some upper body mechanics of running and increasing your heart rate. Call this sitting running, and we're also going to show you kneeling in just a little bit. What you do is you position the band crisscrossing across your chest, holding it there. Now immediately, as soon as I do that, my trunk has to immediately engage. Now I position myself up tall and I work at running mechanics. Now, what I'm trying to do is not allow my feet and my trunk and my hips to swing a lot. So I'm going to put them together, I'm going to tighten up, and I'm going to work right there. 20 second, 30 second periods, just working. When I rest, I drop myself back, allow my trunk to recover, and then you're going to go back up into it back into running. 
what I find is my trunk really engages while I'm doing that. Now, let's take it up to kneeling. So again, position yourself in kneeling. Go ahead, position it, and away you go. It's a great way to go ahead, get your arms working, get your upper body mechanics working, but not have to engage your lower body. Meanwhile, my hips, my trunk are stabilizing while my upper body is working on running mechanics and arm movements. What's really cool is it really makes you learn how to relax your shoulders. Now we're going to go into standing. So let's say now you can get into standing and you can work the standing posture. Now we're going to get back into this. We're going to position ourselves and we're going to work it to simply our mechanic movement up on top. So if your lower body can sustain weight bearing, now you can go ahead, go into standing and get the arms cranking. Notice the heart rate? You'll get it up there, trust me. 20, 30, 40 seconds, scratcher. But what's really cool is you're gonna notice your shoulder girdle relaxing, trunk really engaging, and hips working on stability while arm action is relaxing and swinging. I really like it a lot for just getting my arms warmed up, getting myself going. Arm running, arm running in bands. Engage your trunk, let your arms fly.